Hi, welcome to Stitchback Stories. I'm Michelle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take any custom design and turn it into a patch using a brilliant stitch artist. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that learning to digitize has a lot of levels to it because there's no one way to digitize something. That being said, I'm going to show you as many techniques as I can in this one series, and I'll be posting more videos in the future showing how I digitize different designs. This is a five part series, and in each video, I'll be showing a different type of stitch. At the end of the series, I'll be posting an additional video showing how I actually embroidered the design on my machine, and there I'll be showing all the techniques and materials that I use to get a perfect patch. Let's get started. So this is what the Brilliance platform looks like. Now I do have Stitch Artist Level 2 purchase, so if you see some tools on here that you don't see on your screen, that's okay. Today I'm only going to be using tools available in Stitch Artist Level 1. So if you're super new to Umbrilliance, I'm going to go over some presets first. So I'm going up here in Umbrilliance, Preferences, and under Environment and Hoops, I want to select the correct hoop size. So first I have PES selected because I'm using a Brother embroidery machine, but make sure to check your manual to see what file type your machine takes. So all these dimensions are in millimeters, but you can see down here in the sewing field, it has the conversion into inches. And normally for patches, I do embroider on a 5x7 hoop and I'll embroider multiple patches on that one hoop. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to select one of my smaller hoops. So I'm going to go with a 4x4 hoop and then I just want to click apply. And then moving over here to jumps and overlaps, I just want to make sure that ensure tie surrounding jumps is selected. And click apply and OK. So here we have our artboard, which is our 4x4 hoop, and now I'm going to import the image that I want to digitize. So I'm going up here in the Creates panel, Image, and then selecting this image that I just made on Illustrator. You want to make sure the image you're using is cropped to the exact dimension. You don't want any extra space on the outside. This is because when we digitize, we want to digitize at 100% scale. So whatever size you want your final patch design to be, we want to digitize at that scale. So I'm going to click this image. I'm going back to the selection tab and I'm going to change this to inches and I want my patch to be two and a half inches. So I'm just going to change the dimensions. And so now this patch is at two and a half inches. We're going to digitize at two and a half inches and it's going to embroider at two and a half inches. Now I do want to change this back to millimeters just because it gives you a smaller grid system. And now I'm going back to the create panel. If for whatever reason you don't see your image come up when you imported it, make sure you have this box selected. So this will hide and show your image. Now I'm just going to go ahead and lock this so it doesn't move. And now I can start digitizing. So one thing to know is that when you're digitizing, you always want to be at the same zoom percentage pretty much the entire time. So the shortcuts for this is to press the numbers on your keyboard. So one will get you to 100%, two will be 200, three is 300, and so on. Now I learned from John Deere videos that a really great place to digitize from is at a 6 to 1 scale. Each of these boxes represents a millimeter. So if you're drawing and you're not exactly on this image and you're a whole box away, it's not a really big deal because it's only a millimeter difference. So to begin, I'm going to go back to 100% scale. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create an applique design, right? Because that's what a patch is. So I want to first create the border of the design. And when you sew an applique, the first two stitches you're going to sew is the position or the placement stitch and then the tack down or material stitch. So when you sew the position stitch on your machine, it shows you where on your hoop you need to place your fabric. And then the material or the tack down stitch is going to keep your fabric in place. So I'm going to first select this circle and to get a perfect circle, I'm going to hold the shift key and click and drag. Now I want this to be perfectly centered. So I'm going to go back to the selection tab and just click this center design button. And then going back to the creation tab, oops, I want to make sure this circle is the size of my actual patch. Now I'm going to zoom in real quick here. So again, six to one scale and I want this line to be roughly two thirds of a way 
to the edge of this border. So if we're looking at the width of this border, one third, two third, I'm gonna place the position stitch about at the two third mark. So currently this is just a circle. It has no stitches applied to it. So zooming out real quick, I'm going to select a circle and then I'm gonna apply a stitch type to it. So over here in the stitch panel, I'm gonna select applique. And automatically it's giving me this weird pattern design called the E stitch. I don't want that, I just want a regular run stitch. So over here on the right side for border, I'm going to select none. So after the position stitch, we need that tack down or the material stitch. So I'm going to select this applique and over here in the right panel, we see that position is selected. We also want to select material and I'm going to zoom in real quick. And right now you don't see that second stitch because they're right on top of each other. And I don't want that after I place the fabric down, I want the tack down stitch to come a little bit in. So it's not sewing on the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to click this and over here where we see material inset, I want to bring it in a little bit. So let's see, let's see if I bring it to 0.4. Okay, so now you see that second stitch coming in. And I want this roughly at the one third mark. It doesn't need to be perfect, something like that. That's pretty good. I'm going to zoom out. So if I go over here to the stitch simulator and I click play, you can see how this is going to play out. It's going to sew that position stitch. You're going to put the fabric down and then it's going to go in and sew that tack down stitch. Okay, so back to the creation tab. So now I want to create the satin border. And so to do this, I'm going to select the applique and I'm going to copy and paste this circle. So up here, there is a button for copy. And when you click paste, it's going to paste exactly in the same spot. Except this time, I don't want this to be an applique, so I'm going to select the applique here. Oops, I'm going to select the image. And then I'm going to make it a satin border stitch. So under the stitch tab, I'm going to select the satin border. Over here on the right panel, you can see the settings have changed for the satin border now. And here you can alter how wide or how thin you want the satin border to be. And again, I'm going to zoom in real quick. You can see here that the border looks pretty wide, right? So let's say I have it set to three millimeters. When you actually stitch it out, it's not going to be this wide. And here's why. I'm going to temporarily turn off my 3D stitches. So now I'm seeing the exact lines and points where my machine is going to stitch. So the machine's going to sew this like outer layer, right? which is this line outside and then the inner layer, and then it's going to go in and sew these zigzags, and it's going to go through a few rounds of them. When the machine sews these zigzags, these points are pulling in towards the center because that's the direction of the stitch, and it's going to come stop close to this line here because that stitch is kind of a barricade, preventing the stitches from falling inwards more. So I want to keep in mind that these stitches are going to come in closer to the center point and be a little bit thinner than what I see here. This is called pull compensation. You have to compensate for the tension that's pulling the thread towards the center. So I'm going to click the satin border and I'm going to turn my stitches back to 3D. So just keep in mind that however wide you want this border to be, that you want it to be a little bit thicker than what it's actually going to be. And I want to set mine at around three millimeters. I think that's good. You can always sew samples and play around with it and change the width. And that's a really great thing about digitizing your own designs is that you have the freedom to do whatever you want with the design and you can change it as many times as you want. So if you want to change some of the properties of the satin border, I'm going to go here into the second tab, which is called adjust the underlay properties. When you're sewing a satin stitch, there are different levels of how many stitches you want to sew. So right now I have zigzag parallel and edge run selected, right? So this is what it looks like if I took all of that out, it would literally just sew this satin stitch back and forth. I don't really want that because it's not going to give a lot of stability. It might not cover all the areas underneath and you might see some of the threads or fabrics beneath this. And it's not very stable. So I definitely want this edge run selected. And then 
If I select parallel, you see it's going to sew another layer underneath. And then if I select zigzag, it's going to sew an additional layer underneath. Now, in general, you don't want your stitches to be super dense because it's going to create very hard spots on your design. But because it's the border, I want this to be nice and strong and I want to make sure it's completely filled. So I'm actually going to have everything selected, edge run, parallel and zigzag. And once this is set up, I'm going to make sure that I have the border placed correctly. And for the satchel border, I'm going to want to bring it in a little bit. So I'm holding the shift key to make sure that this circle is changing from the center. So I'll show you from here. So it's changing from the center point. And you see this edge run right here? I'm going to match that to about the point of where this border ends, the border of my illustration. I'm going to turn my stitches back on. And so it's going to look something like that. Um, this isn't the color that I want to use, so I'm going to make sure to change the color. So with the border selected, I'm going to go over here to color. I'm going to click this where it says applique material. It's not an applique, so I want to make sure I give it a color assignment. So under threads, you can select whatever brand of thread you're using, and I'm using Madeira Poly Neon. And then you can search by color, name, or number. And I'm going to use this burnt orange. I find with Imbrilliance that the color display is not very accurate. So you just want to select all your threads beforehand, see what works, and don't get too caught up in how it shows on the screen. And of course, this is your own design, so you can literally change the threads as you're embroidering and try different combinations. So that's how I set up the applique and the satin border stitch. In the next video, I will be showing how to do a fill stitch. So we will be drawing the leaf and the yellow sparkles.